Ah, uh, yes, the Ruler Tool in Tinkercad. JF6720 and I had a moment in the comments where we both admitted that yes, it was the most frustrating tool because we just didn't get it, tried to use it, got confused and dropped it. So of course it has to be a video idea because I have to go back now and figure out how this tool works. And that's what this video is all about. So how does this tool work? And is there any reason why you'd wanna use it? Yes, and of course there's gonna be a reason or reasons why you'd wanna use it. So let's figure it out. Well, let's get going. Right, let's take a look at this ruler. So we can go over here, there it is, there's the icon for it. Uh, it's either drag and drop the icon onto your work plane or you can hit R to drop the ruler. There it is there, so I'm dragging and dropping it or pressing R. And this is where you get to place the ruler. And what you're basically placing is your point of origin. This is where the X, Y, and for us, because we're working in 3D, the Z axes all meet. So I'm gonna drop this down here like that. Now you can move this around by clicking on it and I can drag it around and move it around. This does follow the same snapping type of pattern that we have over here, so I can take this and change the increments in which this is going to snap on my work plane. So right now I have it set for one millimeter and you can see here as I do that, it kind of snaps there. Yeah. So I can place this anywhere I want to. I can try to place it right on that block, but there's an easier way to do this as well. So I'm just gonna place it down like that. Now, if I ever wanna get rid of it, you have this X there, dismiss ruler, and that gets rid of your ruler. So those are the basics around just the placement of our ruler. So I'm going to place it down again because we got more to talk about. So I'm gonna press R on my keyboard. And as soon as I move my mouse around, there it is, it just pops up. And I'm going to place it down on my work plane. Let's say I'm gonna place it right there. Again, I've got it snapping for every millimeter. That's why it's nicely snapping to these lines here. I like that. Okay, next. So now I'm gonna select an object. I'm gonna select this block here. And as soon as I do that, all these numbers pop up. And this is where it got pretty overwhelming pretty quick. But I wanna explain what these numbers are telling us. You're gonna notice that we have sets of numbers here, some along these blue markers and others along these green markers. Now the blue markers and the numbers that are beside them are really just the dimensions of the block. So you can see that this is, in terms of along the y-axis, it's 20 millimeters in depth, 40 millimeters across, and then 20 millimeters up in height. So this is just the dimensions of the block. It's the green markers and these numbers here in millimeters that are telling us its position relative to this point of placement or this point of origin that we have set down here. I'm just gonna hide this menu here. And don't forget, we have the Y axis, X axis, and we also have the Z axis as well. So if I just tilt this back a little bit, I can move this up and you'll notice that we have, again, there's our green value there indicating yet another 12 millimeter difference between the point of origin, which is flat on this work plane, and that this bottom surface here is 12 millimeters away from that point of origin that's flat on our work plane. So there it is. And again, I can move this around. You're gonna notice that these values will change. Also notice, if I were to take it and go on the other side, that we are dealing now with negative values. So for example, here we are now minus 23 because we are now 23 millimeters on the other side of this axis here across this X axis that we have here. Look at that, same thing here. If I take this and I drop it underneath that plane, you'll see that we now get into negative values there. So positive and negative values, again, in relation to this point that we've dropped here on our work plane. So you're also gonna notice that the measurements that they're showing us here are in relation to the edges of this object. So if I drag this back over on this side, along the x-axis here, this, if I rotate it, this edge right here, which was closest to our point of origin, is 13 millimeters away. And this edge here is 23 millimeters away from our origin or our point of placement along the y-axis. So when I take it and I flip it over to the other side, you can see that the numbers still are in relation to these edges here. So this far edge is 20 millimeters away from our point of origin or point of placement. And this edge here is 22 millimeters away from our point of origin there. 
you'll also notice that we can change these values. I can click on this field here and I can change the number there. Same thing over here as well. So if I wanted, let's say, this edge right here, this bottom edge to sit flat up against this line, I can change that value along here on the y-axis to zero. And as soon as I do that and enter it, you're gonna notice now it sits flat up against that axis there. There you go, like that. In fact, I can do that for this one as well. So I can change this negative 20 value to zero. And there it is now sitting flat up against that. And let's just do the same thing over here. So it's flat on that surface there on our work plane. There it is. You'll also notice again, you can also change the dimensions of your object. So at this point I can change this to 30 and you'll see now that it changes the dimensions there. So just be sure that you're clicking on the right field because you could accidentally change the dimensions of your object rather than changing the distances between the object edge and your point of origin. Now we've really been focusing on the measurements between these edges and this point of origin here but we can change that. And there is this little circle here with the three lines. And if I hover my mouse on top of that, you can see that this prompt shows up here saying use midpoint. So if I click on that, I'm now going to use the midpoint. And now you can see that the measurements that are coming up are now in relation to the midpoint of my object. So now this 20 millimeters is no longer measuring the distance between the point of origin and this edge, it is now measuring it between the point of origin and the center point along this axis of the object. Similarly, same thing with this, 15 millimeters from the point of origin to the midpoint of my object along the Y axis. And the same thing over here, if I take a look at my Z axis, 10 millimeters between the point of origin and the midpoint of my object there along the Z axis. So we can change that as well. We can make it so that I can set this to zero. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that it now shifts it so that the object is sitting center, at least along the X axis at the midpoint there. Again, if I hover my mouse on top of that circle there with the three lines, it allows me to toggle back to using the end point. And if I do that, we're now back to using that edge as my reference to the point of origin. So now I can say, look, I want this to be zero. I want to set this back. So there it is. You can either use the midpoint by selecting it or selecting it again to go back to the end point. Now those end points, don't forget, are these end points that are the closest to your point of origin. As soon as I select the second object, the numbers now change because now it's displaying the measurements for this second object and its position in relation to our point of origin or our point of placement there. Now, if I select both of these objects, it's going to treat both of these objects, even though they're not grouped, but it's gonna treat them like one object. And you can see here that I've got my measurement along this edge here and this edge here in relation to this point of origin, but it then provides me the measurement of this object overall as being 72 millimeters, so from this edge to this edge, and from this edge to this edge, these blue values here. It's going to treat these objects as one object, and it's giving me the midpoint for these objects as a whole. And if I were to change the values here, select it, and let's say I make this 60, it will move this entire selection 60 millimeters away from the point of origin along the Y axis. Now, just a side note here, if I take this point of origin and I start clicking on it, you're gonna see that it flips these axes around. It may not seem like a big deal, but just know that if you do that, and I flip it like this, for example, it does change your values because again, this object now is no longer positioned, relatively speaking, in the same way as it was say in this axis here. So just know that if you're to flip these axes that it might invert some of your values um, because it's going to be positioned differently in relation to the point of origin and the axes that are coming off of it. So that, those are the basics around the ruler tool. So the question is, is why would you even want to use this? For me, it's going to be helpful if you're trying to position objects that are not simply aligned either to their center points or along an edge or flush together and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's say you want to make an object that looks like this. So I'm gonna paste one down here that looks like this, there it is. 
And if you already have experience with Tinkercad, you're probably already thinking like, yeah, I know how to do this. It's going to be, let me just show you what I did, something like that. And you could be like, I can do this without any need for a ruler because I've always been doing this. And you're absolutely right. You can do this without the need for a ruler, but the ruler does provide you hopefully a faster way of accomplishing this type of arrangement. And this is a very simple type of arrangement here. So let's just push this off and let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start off with this block and I'm gonna make sure, I wanna place this block on just those axes there. Oh, and you'll notice here that these values are talking about the midpoint. So I'm gonna to toggle this to the end point. There it is. And I can try to maneuver that into place like that, or I can just simply type in zero, type in zero. Next, I'm gonna position this so that it is centered to that rectangle there. You could have done this with the alignment tool by simply selecting both, clicking alignment or L, and then just simply aligning it like that. However, it's the next step that the ruler does come into play. Now I wanna sync this cylinder into this block so that it is exactly halfway through. So this is where the ruler can come in handy. So if I select my block, let's just see the dimensions of this. This edge here is at 40 millimeters off of this point of origin here. So it's 40 millimeters. I want to sync this in so that it is halfway into this edge here. So one way you can think of it is that the midpoint of this cylinder should be at the 40 millimeter mark. And I can do that by taking this and ensuring that I'm using my midpoint. So I'm gonna to toggle this to the midpoint. I'm going to select my cylinder. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this distance here along the green line here to 40 millimeters. And once I do that, this is now sunk in halfway through this cylinder. Now, could you have done this without the ruler? Absolutely. You would have just done the measurements and then positioned this in there and using your arrow keys or just the drag feature on there, move this cylinder into place. This ruler just makes it a little bit faster. This ruler feature is gonna be great for objects that you want to position that are not immediately on the surface of an object or at the midpoint of an object. So the ruler feature works with objects, grouped objects, and of course, with holes as well. So there it is, there we have our hole. And if I wanna place this hole inside of this object here that is not directly at the center or along an edge, the ruler feature might be the best way to go about this. If I wanted this hole to sit four millimeters off of this edge, now I can select this hole. I wanna make sure now that we're looking at the end point there, so I'm going to toggle this so that it is using the end point. And now that gives me the measurement of this edge here to this point of origin there. And I want that to be four millimeters. So I'm gonna type in four and there it is. And let's say I want it at five millimeters off of this front edge here. So then I can take this and type in five like that. And there we have it. Now let me ungroup this because I wanna show you another handy feature about this. So I'm going to ungroup it. And it is the ability to repeat elements once you have established these different placements using the ruler. So let me show you. So I've got this hole here set perfectly where I would like it, but I wanna set a series of these holes along this object here. So I'm going to just duplicate it, Control D. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to set the distance. So this thing right now, based on the measurements here, this first hole is set four millimeters into it. It's also 10 millimeters wide, if you wanna think of it that way. So it's 14 millimeters. I wanna set the next one four millimeters down from that. So if I take this duplicate and I set it so that it is sitting at 18 millimeters, you would have it like that. Now, if I do duplicate again by pressing Control D or by doing this duplicate button over here, it will then repeat that element without me needing to repeat those steps again. In fact, I can keep doing that over and over and over again like that. So that's a handy tool, again, made possible because of this ruler feature. If you have a lot of repeating elements that you want repeated, the ruler might be the way to do it. Now we've been talking a lot about moving objects in relation to their X and Y axis positions, but don't forget we have the ability to do the same thing along the Z axis as well. So for example, if I get rid of those and I just select, pressing shift, as I select these three holes inside of this object here, 
I can change the depth of these holes again by clicking on this field, which is now set to zero, but I can make it so that it is sitting five millimeters off the bottom of this work plane there and quickly align them that way. I do notice, and it's nice that I can just have this toggled on and it doesn't really get in the way. I still have the ability to do all of these other functions, do stuff like turn things into holes, group, ungroup, use the alignment tool, work plane tool. It all, it all still works with this toggled on. So if you just have this on in the background, it shouldn't really interfere with what you're doing. You just gotta get used to having all these numbers showing up here and not accidentally changing the dimensions of your object when you wanted to change its placement on the axis instead. So there it is, that's where I'm at with the ruler tool. Handy for certain situations, I'm glad I went back and revisited this because I know I will be using it for certain applications. And I hope this helped to clarify some of the mystery around this tool. All right, that's it for me. Until next time, take care.